Hello everyone, welcome back to the ESL Hearthstone Legendary Series. I'm still pretty baffled about that last play from Soundstorm. It was... I'm not, man. I'm tripping on good vibes right now. That Whoa. was awesome. It was. It was. It was indeed awesome. That was sick. Soundstorm's looking to make big moves coming back to the Legendary Series Land Finals. He won season what do you mean one. looking? He made big moves. Looking to make big moves again. The thing is, like, Roger will just pretty much do the same exact thing he normally does, because... Mm. He's pretty mechanical with how things have proceeded so yeah. far, but he better watch out. Because the forecast is looking like there's some dank storms coming to you. Yeah. The next Spider Man movie, Spider Raj versus Silent Storm. All right, this is the fan fiction that you wanted to write about. Yeah, this is the perfect finals <laughs> for my fan fiction to get popular. Either player coming is extremely deserving. Uh, both players are extremely. Very well technical play, or very good technical play. Uh, well prepared with how they actually set up their lineups. And great play overall. Um, you just got to be impressed by someone like Silent Storm. He's gotten so much hype. He's gotten he's won our Season 1 uh, Legendary Series, and no one's invited him in tournaments ever yeah. again. Yeah, it's kind of You fun. organizers need to start inviting this guy and talking to him because he is really good, and he brings different decks. He's not the guy that's bringing Hunter, Warlock, and Warrior to a to a lineup. Yeah. He brings Priest, Rogue, and Paladin, and he's about to qualify if he wins three games against Roger, which is the final test, because Roger has the brutal, efficient decks. He's bringing the Druid, uh, Warrior, and Warlock lineup that everyone else is doing. So it's right now a test to see if he can get over the final obstacle. This is, this is all about Silent Storm uh, versus a tried-and-true player who's just going to play the best decks that he thinks is in the meta. Mm. And before we jump into the finals, we do want to give a big shout out to our sponsors, Plantronics and Gigabyte. If you guys want to uh, see more Hearthstone Legendary Series action in the future, uh, make sure you support those guys. Also, make sure you tweet at us, uh, follow us at ESL Hearthstone, or use the hashtag HLS. Tell us what you thought about that last series or your predictions <laughs> for the finals. What, what did you think of that last series, TJ? It, I'm was, hyped. it was definitely okay. Mm. At least. At least okay. Yeah, or above average. At least above average. Above average. Possibly. Pretty good. Possibly even beyond that. But there are your players for the finals. Yeah, and Soundstorm, you talked about earlier. I mean, people aren't inviting him. We didn't even invite him. He qualified again. That's true. We didn't, we didn't even invite him to season <laughs> two of the Legendary yeah. Series. We didn't even of, need to. There was eight spots, and uh, we ended up not inviting our season one champion. Yeah. But there's a good chance, well, not a good chance, but he has a really um, solid chance, I guess, of making it once again. Soundstorm from Team Celestial, Spider Roger from Wayy Spider. Is he going to be donning the red Spider Raj suit with the black Spider Raj suit? It's red and blue. So, agree to just disagree. needs a little bit of a uh, little bit of modern makeover. Mm -hmm. I kind of like uh, where the Amazing Spider-Man was going with the series, but, you know, because they have Emma Watson, and <laughs> that's way better than Kirsten Dunst. Um, but overall, it just felt like a little bit uh, lack of inspiration. It definitely had a really strong plot uh, possibility. It just ended up going too much. I watched it on the way uh, to, okay. I think, buy a game house cup the other, the other time. Well, I hope my script will impress you. It would be, as long as you put Silent Storm in there. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know who's going to play the leading female role in my story. With honor. Magic Amy. <laughs> Magic Amy. Soundstar, of course, was a part of Team Magic Amy, so that would be... Yeah, a... and he actually played Domdis, right? Yeah, d yeah and Domdis. Domdis was on Team Magic yeah. Amy. It's like, this, yeah. they used to be teammates. Yeah. Actually, no, I think uh, Domdis uh, has only started joined playing after. recently. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Um, so Domdis joined Team Magic Amy after Magic Amy um, even sort of left the Hearthstone right. scene, so. And the legend continues. This is a terrible matchup for uh, for Paladin. Warriors is generally really good. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, a lot of, well, there's so many awkward moments later on in the game where yeah, there's you just... have to hold off on hero power. Just because you're afraid that it's... Of, like, the Grim Patron yeah. and stuff, yeah. You're giving him one extra Grim Patron. So it's weird. Unless you put on so much pressure that you're like, oh, well, I can just kill him. Um, he, it's... It, almost all of your stuff is vulnerable. Harrison Jones is going to help. Reporting for duty. At least yeah. some? 
I mean, but the whirlwind effects are just so plentiful. Although he doesn't have death bite, right? Death bite is the key usually to unlocking that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no death bite. Wow, this is actually. Okay, so he realized that he doesn't have to use Whirlwind yet. Just because Threat right. Quartermaster is not going to come out for one more turn. <clears throat> How so do you we... like uh, No Mission Venter compared to some of the other choices? Loot Hoarders and. Uh, I like Pilot and Shredder in place of No Mission Venters. Because Pilot and Shredders is sort of like. It's not necessarily drawing a card. But it's a bigger body, and then once they remove that body, they have to remove another body too. So it's effectively like two cards. Mm -hmm. um, it all depends on the quality that you get from No Wish Inventor. It also brings you deeper in your deck, but I really like Powder Shredder also because it can allow you to put on more pressure. Well, now he's got Quartermaster, and all of a sudden, all of the problems of Grim Patron just seems to wash away when you have three threes. Mm -hmm. And so as a result, Spider Roger, he's going to do the Spider Roger thing in Whirlwind. It's yeah. definitely the best play here available by a big margin because he needs to stop that quartermaster from getting the uh, value. Yeah. That Harrison Jones might end up being a huge MVP, by the way. Mm. Shutting down uh, like a death spike will be really key. <clears throat> this is okay. So we're getting we're approaching the point where, um, especially once Thorstein comes out on turn six, where. Soundstorm is going to have some really tough turns. It's so hard to play around everything. And he's drawing through so much of his deck here. Jack Corset, though, no weapons. Yeah, no weapons at all. He's drawn through like more ten, more than ten cards in his deck, and he hasn't seen a single Death Bite or Fire War Axe. Right. It hasn't affected him that much, but I mean, he's taken some, some, some beatings here. He's already down to twenty health. He's still a few turns yeah, away from but being. It's, able but it's Paladin. It is Paladin. Yeah. There it is. The Death Bite. The Death Bite, again, will be activated prematurely by the Harrison Jones. Mm -hmm. Really nice for him to get all these cards cheapened, including the War Song and the Grim Patient. So the combo is live as of next turn. Can he handle it, though? Dr. Boom. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. We are ready for some wacky stuff. There's Unstable Ghoul with a bunch of Grim Patrons available here. He does have to be careful with these boom bots, though. It might even... Oh, man. I don't even know. Actually, that second... Yeah, Sledge Belcher is problematic. Let's see. Grim Patron with the Warsong Commander. Suicide in the Unstable Portal. So he spawned four patrons. Spent two to get through. Despite might be... Yeah, Despite might be a better setup so that way you get more damage. And also next turn, with the Despite developed, you can throw out the Dread Corsair for not only a charge, yeah, but also to maybe be an absorption for some uh, boom bots. Sure. He's thinking, how much of a beating is he going to take, though, by yeah. not addressing the board state this turn? Also, he's going to get some really bad news that Harrison Which Jones is a Harrison comes Jones. Down. Yeah, yeah. So he's thinking, okay... What are the pros and cons? Also, now that he's run out of time and he hasn't moved fast enough, he might be forced to go Death Spite. Yeah. There's not enough time to do all these animations. Yeah. Oh. Uh oh no, he's definitely oh, run out of time. Oh, jeez. Oh, gosh. There's nowhere near enough time. Roger took way too long to think about this, unfortunately. Spider Roger just threw out his web, and it didn't grab onto anything. And he's panicking. Okay, so he... Let's just see where these boom bots hit. If it snipes any of the three threes or damages them, then consecration ends up becoming okay. Okay. So that is a clear. Yeah, that's just consecration. Down. Uh Roger straight up running out of time was really unfortunate there. Because um, now he doesn't control the state of the board. And this game all of a sudden has been blown wide open, TJ. Yeah. That could be like the backbreaker because uh, this Patron Warrior should be able to just snipe the Paladin and move on. Yeah. But it looks like it might just die. He doesn't have Execute. What can he even do right now? He gets to develop Death by take damage. He can block the same amount of damage that he's taking with the Dread Corsair, yeah. but uh, this feels like it's all but over. Yeah, I mean, and this is one of the things where I feel pretty bad because I hyped Roger before the match of like, yeah, like he's gonna he's be like fast, a, yeah. efficient, technical. But uh, and it's like a deck where in the past he hasn't waited that long ever. 
He hasn't like gotten to that point where he's ran out of time. Isn't and there really was only like two options. Right. It was like develop despite and or, block damage, yeah. or develop war song. Uh, well, commander I mean, it's always easy because you you want to do the counting before you make the play, just in case. Yeah. You don't, don't want to be figuring it out as you're doing it. So he's counting, like, can I go for this? Can I clear Dr. Boom? Do I get enough patrons? What if this hits one of my patrons? I can fill the board and clear it. Uh, but unfortunately, he just ran out of time. Sometimes with patrons, you just got to wing it and rely on your technical play. Because the animations do take for long. So right. you have to sort of be able to eyeball a situation and say, okay, Grim Patrons are good. Mm -hmm. And then maneuver it as they're on the board right. and, and like go from there. It out. Yeah. It's a pretty valid uh, point there. And now Silent Storm is making the victory push here. Uh, I'm looking for a way for him to survive. He has Execute, but he's still taking a lot of damage. And there's going to be Tyrion coming down next turn. Tyrion is the trump card here. Mm -hmm. He can execute and draw one card. Second execute, that's helpful. Deal with the other threat. Yeah. So you don't uh, die. One card ends up being pretty valuable. Yep. But how long can he survive with one card in his hand and that card being Grom? Uh, I think it's lethal. Yeah, if you just quartermaster consecrate. Ooh. Is he just BMing? No, it was one off. Would have been seven damage plus consecrate would have been nine. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. I mean he could have like tried to get a juggle. You're right. Yeah. He had two opportunities to get juggles, but um pretty risky. Still in a fantastic position though. Sure. All is well. Cool Taskmaster and Gromash. That is a combination to potentially in the game, but not in this scenario. Uh, Tyrion should lock this up. He's one damage off still, but I don't foresee a way to do it. Gromash is going to crash onto a Divine Shield. <laughs> Actually, no, he's got the he's got the weapon. But even if you could allow to do that, he'd still be in a terrible spot. Sawstorm escapes Paladin. Versus the patient warrior. That is so huge. Yeah. This paladin has been doing quite a bit of work for Soundstorm over the course of, of today. And it looks like he's going to try and, like, he throws out his decks in a very similar order, saving the priest for last. Picks up a quick win with the paladin. Mm -hmm. And now he just has the uh, priest and rogue left. Right. The rogue can definitely beat this warrior. It can definitely beat the druid. Uh, struggles against handlock, but. The priest is really where it needs to get as many chances as possible. It seems to be the uh, the poison against Druid that he wants to bring. The priest can also beat the warrior as well, right? Yeah. Because it's got the board clears. Yeah. But it does also take a lot of punishment and also suffers from sometimes passivity based off draws. Yeah. Not having like pieces pieces of combos. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that the control priest suffers. The heavy control priest, I guess. Sure. The Alcani type uh, with not having the consistency with drawing combo. So uh, it still should be a really good series. I predict another game five seems to be the trend. Well, actually, not so much today. Yesterday it was. Today's been three ones because a lot of the underdog decks have been taking wins in that fourth game. It's true. We're yeah. expecting it to like go a certain way and then go into game five with a, yeah. a matchup that should be favored. And all of a sudden it just topples over because mm -hmm. the underdog does end up taking the percentage. And that's why never count yourself out and don't give up. I've seen some players concede on turn one. That's really bad. Don't do that. I haven't seen that in a while. Some players do. Uh, some people did it strategically. Like I know like Forreston, for example, uh, conceded because he wanted to like give him the win so that way he wouldn't lose this deck so he can target something else. I, I yeah. wasn't exactly sure about that. Um, but it was sometimes the strategy involved in it. But if you feel like you can't win a magic because it's so bad, you generally shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Unless you're trying to conceal information. That's that's a little, that's what's a little bit backwards about Conquest. Yeah. You're trying to conceal so you don't show information to your opponent because you have to play it again. Yeah. The loser has the it happens. sort of conceal disadvantage when if they lose the game, they show right. all their cards. It can snowball. Yeah, it can mm -hmm. just really be bad. Uh, Silent Storm probably going to throw out the Rogue next. And Spider Roger, another day, another wave of crime to fight. Another Does he villain. fight crime? 
Hearthstone crime. Like, you know, purging the ladders mm -hmm. of hunters one one person at a time? Yep. Indeed. Spider Raj. Mm. I wonder... Is Emma Watson in that? Oh. No, it's Magic Amy. Oh, sorry, Amy. yeah. No, Emma Stone. <laughs> it's Magic Amy. <laughs> Emma Watson is Magic Amy. Would be way out of place. What are you doing, British New York? Yeah. <laughs> Magic Amy is the damsel in distress. Silent Storm is trying to recapture Magic Amy in order to reform the team that he once was the king of. Did I tell you that I watched Gone Girl on the plane and I finally get all the references to Magic Amy with that? You, you just was, watched Gone Girl. It was Girl. really funny. Gone Girl gave me nightmares for weeks. Oh, because you actually have a girlfriend. S subtle brag, <laughs> DJ. Very subtle. <laughs> 10 out of 10, sir. I tip my fedora. Thank you. Two mountain giants. That's going to be a little tricky. Silent Storm does have one of those saps that can help you pressure, but early on, he's going to need a little bit more juice. Remember, the way he won was to get Violet Teacher damage out early. Because mm -hmm. how do you actually remove these minions before you just get overwhelmed by them? Yeah. You need, like, creatures to be able to push through whatever you're sapping. <laughs> so, just going to throw out the Blood Mage, try and cycle here. Yeah, plus it's, like, really important because the, um, the, the, the Thanos can get the Eviscerate without you having to play Thanos to activate it. So, you want to get the Thanos ahead of time. So, in a lot of ways, you can set it up for you to use your mana more efficiently. Yeah. Helps you clear those first mm -hmm. targets. Fan is pretty expensive, but you can also set up your weapon here, so that way deadly poisons become a way for you to fight against anything on the board. You do have prep, though. Yeah. Well, it seems like he's thinking about whether or not he wants to try and cycle Fan on Ives to maybe draw into something a little more useful. If his opponent sets up an 8 health minion, then Fan of Knives is not that important. He'd rather have the Eviscerate. Ooh, interesting. He's got a lot of damage on his dagger. He's got uh, dagger up, prep, oil, deadly oh. poison. Oh, so that's uh, that's pretty strong. Mm -hmm. I'd still rather save a sap so that way you can target like sludge belcher if he has it or something yeah. else. Is there a way to remove it without using sap? You can clear, yeah, dagger, so prep, options. tinkers. Coin eviscerate. Just hit it with your dagger and eviscerate it. Oh yeah, I guess that is. One or you way. can cash in on your blood mage downos if you want to preserve your um, mm -hmm. your dagger instead. But you know, sap is a lot less complicated. It is. It's just that um, yeah, if you play sludge belcher, then you're kind of back in the same spot, except even more awkward. Mm -hmm. You don't have blade flurry just yet. Violet Teacher is really nice to pick up if you can coin eviscerate. Uh, maybe you don't coin eviscerate. Maybe you. Mm, this is complicated because of the one once as well. You can't just like oil. I mean, you could, but. Mm. So we can say he's going to use the uh, eviscerate with the prep here, just to remove the giant and press for a little bit of damage. He's taking it pretty slow. He's pacing himself. He's not going all in. Yeah. Which is sort of what you have to do. It's what he did in the last game when he won. He just slowly built up a board, slowly picked away with damage. Right. And then eventually pushed through with a sap. But Roger's got a board clear here with a silence on his Ancient Watcher and a Shadow Flame on the, on the Owl. He could try to forego that and end up setting like a wall like the Mountain Giant Sun Fury. That sets up 13 points of taunt health. That's also really powerful. Yeah, but being proactive seems to be... Right. I'd be really afraid of a Blade Flurry because of the found of spell power. Yeah. This thing's going to use Dark Bomb. I actually like using the Silence more just because there's not too many Silence targets. Whereas there's going to be eventual Dark Bomb targets. Like, yeah. there's more Dark Bomb targets, like SI Agent. Yeah, that's true. Or Orthon Ring Farseer. Then there's Silence targets, which would be pretty much just be Bank Lead. I mean, you'd have a 4-1. It's basically the difference between keeping Dark Bomb and keeping the Owl. 
and having a 4-1 on board. The 4-1 would, interesting enough, challenge with, uh, the Emperor Thorson, though. Because now you have to silence it with your Owl. But it's still a 5 health minion. Yeah. And Deadly Poison, 0 mana. That's a, such a sick activator. Oh, wait, wait. He has Blade Flare. How much damage is this? That's 6, 12, 17. No, he's a little bit short. You could tell he was fr frantically mousing over mm -hmm. his card to try and count up his damage. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. Wait, so he's got uh, Sharp Sword of the Damage, plus three. So, Dagger... That is 20 damage. The uh, Dagger... Because the the blade, the weapon's going to be six attack. And if you have Blade for it, that's 12. If you hit with that Thorazine, it's five. But you get the plus three for attack. Do you have enough mana to do that? Weapon, three, four, yeah. Right? Am I, am I missing something, TJ? Three plus six, six is just, He's nine. just like triple counting, right? Wait. No, I think that's 19 damage. Is it 19 damage? Yeah. Yeah. So if you yeah, dagger yeah. in deadly, your dagger's at three. Right, and then you the take your sharp soil, it's six, and you have uh, eight damage. So that's 14. Oh, wait, no. It's played for, what? No, it's 20. Wasn't yeah, it? you're right. Did he have enough mana? So he, that total he combination costs. It's only five mana. Five? No, six mana, because the blade flurry and the. He had enough mana. Especially since the deadly poison costs zero. I feel like I'm miscounting somewhere. I counted as well, so I'm in. I'm in this boat with you. Well, now he's got a flurry. It's just too much. But he can't actually do everything. I feel like I might have missed something. So he had five damage on board. He daggers up. That's right. Two. Well, the most important thing is to count how much is uh, oil and deadly poison plus the flurry. That's twelve damage because it's a six damage weapon. Yeah. And then um, plus the eight attack. Plus the eight attack that you would gain from the combo. So dagger up is two mana. Deadly poison was zero, so it's still two mana. Tinker's was three, three so, it's, so five. it's five. And Blade flurry was only one, yeah, so, so it's six right. mana. And he had, he had a coin if he needed something extra, too. That seemed like exactly it, though. Uh-oh. Well, he actually has a board clear here, too, but he takes damage from the boom, Dr. Boom. Mm -hmm. Oh. Ouchies. He's got another flurry, too. Okay, so the Drake ends up absorbing all the damage there. Drake and Heelbot, though. It's pretty nice. Interestingly enough, uh, the rogues outcarded the handlock. Usually, the rogue spends a lot of cards to try and get board presence. He did one turn where all he did was sprint. So, it's true. So, how can he piece together? He doesn't really have any aside from the oils. There's not much direct damage, and the oils by themselves. I mean, I guess it's a lot, but he has to set it up over a couple turns, mm -hmm. and it gives uh, Roger like opportunities to just put up a wall. <clears throat> Which makes it harder to push through because you have to spend one attack of the dagger to actually um, attack into one of the creatures. Right. This might be a Vaya Teacher sap. Yeah. Hmm. But then your rest of the turn stinks, TJ. It does. You only have three mana remaining. You can SI, but you don't even kill off the. You just have to SI face. I mean, that building... might be realistic. Building up a board is pretty important. Oh, wait. You so can you can... also... oh sorry. Go ahead. Just so you can try, I was going to say, so you can try and stick something on the board to combo with oil mm -hmm. to push through for damage, or even push through a taunt with whatever creature you have. It's true. He's kept coin for a really long time. It's going to always be a combo enabler. He's got double oil and uh, blade flurry next turn. Mm -hmm. It's going to cost 9, 11. No, he doesn't have enough mana because <clears throat> he doesn't have the weapon up. No, he would have enough. He has 11 mana next turn. No, but he doesn't have the weapon up. Oh, yeah, that's true. No, he could weapon up. Wep you can weapon up in Drake. He can weapon, coin, sharp sword oil, sharp sword oil for nine mana, then blade flurry. That's lethal. Oh, oh you're right. Yeah. Because of the coin. Ah, that's yeah. right. He got it. There it is. Okay, so the second time around, we got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Or am I? Not, I feel like I'm really missing something. I TJ. don't think like, so. I'm, I'm going out on a limb here and like, make feeling a little dumb. But I told you we're in this boat together. Okay. Thank you, TJ. Yeah. You're a good co-caster. Dude, Roger just got dunked again. Sandstorm making big combo plays. 
Yeah. All right. Well, Silent Storm just one win away from going to the land finals again. This is like bad. Like, okay, if Roger queues up Handlock and loses against Priest, like this is just absolutely absurd what Silent Storm is able to do and goes to the finals again. Yeah. I just wrote my notes for the next match. Oh, yeah. But if you show it on camera, Priest, I don't well, think you can see it. Now you just gave away your casting secrets. Mm -hmm. You've now become uh, exposed, TJ. They found out all your secrets. All right. So uh, we actually have a screenshot of the the board from last oh, time. Oh, do we? So we're either going to applaud you or shame you, Bro Dan. All right. So let's count this up. He has seven mana total. He could dagger up. That's two mana. Tinker Sharp Soil. That's five mana. Well, he would have to deadly poison. Deadly poison. Then first. Tinker Sharp Soil. So he would have a six attack weapon. Right. With an eight attack creature on the board. So that's fourteen. Fourteen. But he would blade flurry. Blade flurry. For and six damage, exactly 20. And that would cost six mana total. Yes, exactly 20. I'm not stupid! Yes! High five, TJ! Congratulations! All right. Well, that just happened, but the second time around, uh, the we weren't sure about the mana cost, but it ended yeah. up being right. So, there it is. Frodan better than Silent Storm confirmed. Mm -hmm. And Asmo as well, because he agreed with Dan. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Meanwhile, he will spot like every other crazy niche lethal yeah. and uh, you know completely make us dumbfounded and cause us to have whiplash. That's, that's why we questioned ourselves. If it was anybody else in any right. other situation, we'd be like, that's niche like, lethal, no 100%. Way. I'm not going to uh -huh. even doubt it. But Soundstorm finds himself in a position where he's got, once again, three opportunities with to find one with the priest. Dude, that is such a cool story. Yeah. Silent Storm is so good. I'm proud to say at the Season 1 land that I believed in him before most people did. Yeah, what was his title? He was like... I called him the best player you haven't heard of. Yeah. Which was a really good... It's still kind of true. People have heard of him just because of the Season 1 land finals, but he's been mm -hmm. sort of silent since then. People said... Um, wow, there was even... It wasn't even an unintentional <laughs> pun. All my puns are unintentional. It's really frustrating. Yeah. Um, he, quite call, he caused quite the storm whoa. at the Season 1 final. Eh, nice. Eh. Sick meme. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, people heard of him a little bit more once uh, Celestia was announced because there were some big names involved for that. And like reading the thread of that, like, oh, yeah, Silent Storm. I think that was the guy that had those awkward interviews. Like, that's how, pe right. that's how people remembered him. <laughs> Not the guy that had some sick decks with some sick play. Yeah. So with at the time people didn't really th consider Demon Lock too viable. Uh Dark Wanix was the one really trying to pilot that, but it didn't seem like he was terribly successful with it. Silent Storm won the entire tournament with it. Even after people knew it was Demon Lock. Mm -hmm. Usually you had the surprise factor and it, it continues to improve. Um or sorry, you continue to improve your play against it because you figure out how to optimize. No, he shrecked everybody. Yeah. Shall be mine. Here we go. Can Silent Storm once again defy the odds with what? his priest deck against Handlock against one of the toughest matchups for this class? What could be the final match of Group C and what could be the final match of the Legendary Series for Roger? Roger has a 3 0, the priest. It's doable. It's doable, but it's tough. He's got Warlock, which definitely can do it. The Warrior, which can beat anything. Mm -hmm. And Druid, which has wild growth sometimes into like the perfect curve. And yeah. he's uh, he's played pretty well so far outside of a few little missed turns there because he just roped. Yeah. But we've seen Spider Man be in a lot tougher situations than being down 2 0 in a Hearthstone series. So we'll see if Spider Raj can overcome. Yeah, we'll see. You know, he's got the the combo war, the Shrinkmeister and Shadow War paint against the Twilight Drake. Mm -hmm. But is he? Gonna I'm waiting for Silent Storm just to draw a big game hunter, just like completely outthink everybody here. It's like, oh yeah, of course. Uh, I knew everyone would play Mountain Giants. Yeah. But is he going to have time um, to be able to use Shrinkmaster Cabal? If, uh, no. No, he doesn't have to. You can just use it with Shadow or Pain. Yeah. He's going to play a second Mountain Giant, though, and then he coins Sylvanas to try to answer it. Hopefully, your opponent doesn't have the Iron Beak Owl. Yeah. No other play. 
Yeah, the nice thing is that if you steal with the giant, you have a lot of ways to make it live again and restore it. I have no time for game. <clears throat> of course, if he has the um, if he has the owl, you are really sad. Wow. Yes, that is immense sadness. <laughs> Not really phased at all. Ah, uh, well, this is a really tough matchup. I don't think you can get too upset over everything. He can make some fancy plays with this wild pyromancer. Yes. Well, yeah, you can um, wild pyromancer, shrinkmeister, shadowward pain, and then just leave the eight-two giant going up against a three-one and a three-two, or a three-one yeah. and a three-one. Yeah, three-one, two three ones, which is conveniently placed by two mortal coils. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Roger looks a little bit stressed out right now, though. I mean, I guess I would be too if I was down two, two to zero. Uh, well, you just really hope that your opponent doesn't have like the perfect answers. I don't even know I what would be the perfect if... answers here. Yeah, it's true. This is a pretty good answer for this board, I'd say. Right. Hmm. Quickly. He's saving Pyromancer for uh, the Holy Nova next turn, right? I imagine so. Mm -hmm. But it seems weird. But then I he loses the Shrinkmeister on yeah. board. A little unusual. I, I don't I don't know too much about that one. It's I feel like it's a little unfair to just call that a misplay, but I think it might be something that Silent Storm was regretting because he hovered over the Wild Power Mancer. Maybe he thought he had one more mana. Right. Who knows? Maybe he's just thinking three steps ahead of us. Also a possibility. Wild Power Mancer Holy Nova now does kill off the Giant. But that's... Okay, so he's going to really hope that this doesn't kill the Northshire Cleric so he can heal and draw a lot of cards. Yeah, and he can kill up the giant by using Circle of Healing and then Thought Steal. Ouch. Oh, that's not good. Well, at least he can still kill off <laughs> the giant. I feel like Sonic one's ready to give up on this match. And he gets an Agent Watcher. I think that's pretty telling of how this is going. Mm -hmm. uh, Handlock is absolutely taking a hot piling steam of doo doo onto the priest's chest. And this is going to be the final push. Lotheb. Shuts down spells. Priest can't answer. And that's going to wrap up game three. Spider Raj is back in the game. Yeah. This was the matchup, though, that um, by all accounts he yeah, should like, win. If he can't win this game. Like, not only is he out, but it's like, you didn't win Handlock versus Priest. Like, it's just not, today's not your day. Yeah. Today seemed to be going pretty well for Roger. But he's still got some work to do. And he's going to be able to push through here. Exacties with the lethal. Well, and then some. So there it is. Raj now has, uh, I like that we're calling him Raj now. He has Warrior and Druid up against the Priest. Which should go first here? Druid? To be honest, it doesn't really matter. you got to win with both if you want to win the series. Well, which one, which one is the better chance statistically? We don't have to worry too much about like which should he choose, but which is the better. Uh, That's a tough thing to say. Choice. Probably Druid, I'd imagine, especially since he. You think Page War is that bad against the priest? It all depends. It's so inconsistent, like the the way that the priest would deal with Page Warrior. Like all the answers are inconsistent. Right. A lot of things can get stolen by Cabal Shadow Priest. I just realized. Yeah, a lot like, of things can get stolen. No Mission Venner. Yeah, and cards like Shadow Madness are just fantastic. Um, right. Even just like Alkanized Circle. Uh, the wild pyromancer combos you can't can't use those uh, most of the time. Yeah, it's very rare. It's like if if a couple of three ones survive with the grim patron, uh, you might be able to to take it with the pyromancer, and then like the shadow madness ends up proccing three three. Yeah, and then you can like suicide it or something. But yeah, that's really obscure. Um, generally speaking, I feel like priests could do well, but. I, I would say that combo decks in general have a good time against Priest. It, it's always had, uh, whether it's Miracle Rogue, Freeze Mage, uh, OTK, Warlock, like all those things had a really good shot against Priest. So I would I would probably queue up Warrior if I was Roger. Doesn't really matter. You still have to win with both, like you said. Yeah. So 
Oh, Cornico was actually the druid who ran um, Spectral Knights. Mm -hmm. So this druid from Rogers is really standard. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I think Silent Storm's got a good shot. I really do. Roger, he sort of... Uh, it, it seems like his, his results today have been sort of mixed. Um, like, yep. looking back on Roger's game so far today, it seems like he has not had the best of time, but he's ended up taking his games. Um, you look at the last series that he played. He played, um, he beat, what was it, Azuzu or uh, Luigi's? No, he beat uh, Luigi's. He beat Luigi's. Before that, he was in this uh, seated beforehand. So. And it was sort of a situation where his decks lined up, and now his decks are really being tested. And so he's going to have to find victories here with Druid and Patron Warrior against Priest. And that's going to be a tall order. He might have some confidence thinking that Priest is considered the weakest class right now. Maybe he didn't get to see the last series that Silent Storm played since there was a, a little bit of a delay going into that last match. So maybe he's not in, as intimidated as we are at the moment. But it's still going to be a rough road. Must protect the wife. Once again, we go into what could be the final game of the day. Soundstorm's Priest versus Sway Spider's Roger. And a oh, wild growth interbait. GG. Oh, yeah. There it is. Into Ancient of Lore. <laughs> yeah. This is one of the, the dream hands. Wow, I'm surprised he actually... I mean, you want the better curve. No, he threw away a wrath. No, no, it went. It's just like that spectator thing. Oh, like okay. You okay. throw it away, and then like it slides into the slot that's missing. I thought he threw away wrath and got a wrath back. Yeah. yeah, the ancient of lore. Yeah, it wasn't too surprised about that, but okay. Looked as yeah. though he was throwing away the wrath. Coin wild growth and to innervate druid with the claw. Oh. Okay. Whoa. Fair it enough. This plays more. This plays more consistent. The one thing, you see that yeah. he didn't play. Um, it gives Northside him the cleric. Yeah, that's true. So you can have an extra turn. That way, next turn you can like coin out a druid claw. Even if he didn't draw into pot, should he coin out a druid claw? Have innervate to maybe use with like a right. a seven drop or something if he drew into it. But now he's gonna want to wrath this. Actually, he can wrath and then innervate the pilot shredder. That's really huge. Yeah, and then have. Rid of the claw right on curve the following turn. Mm -hmm. Then your opponent plays the Auchenar Soul Priest on curve, just a challenge to 4 3. So, how does this relate to everything? How do you deal with it? Do you just swipe this and coin hero power? He just gives it up. Oh, he drew the shooting next Ramus, so he can just drop that pretty comfortably. Cross your fingers for no Holy Nova. Yeah, that'd actually be pretty punishing, considering he used a lot of his resources early on to try and get this this early lead with the Innervade right. and with the uh, the Wild Growth. So he's running out of cards. But there is no Holy Nova, so... Right. Most likely, Her uh, Drew the Claw. Drew the Claw would be really nasty, considering that it buffs that to a 5-6 taunt. Yeah. I don't know if that's... Hmm. I guess you wouldn't use a... Well, he's, he's, he's playing around Cabal Shadow Priest. Yeah. Which ends up being the right play. Holy Nova comes just a little bit too late. Playing around Cabal Shadow Priest seemed to be an excellent choice, considering there's two. Both players have Harrison Jones. Well, what's so funny about playing around Cabal Shadow Priest is that it forced, like, an unoptimal trade. So Pilot Shredder ended up not getting, like, too much good value. Yeah. But giving up that Druid of the... Or, sorry, that Dire Wolf Alpha would have been pretty devastating. Mm -hmm. So you could play a 4-5 or a 5-4. Or maybe you'd heal Sludge Belcher. Because uh, Sludge Belcher would complicate the combat math. 4-5 that has yeah. unlimited potential. Or 5-4. What are we, that's... CLG? <laughs> yeah. Is a swipe good here? Um, 
a little bit if you want to trade the shade. Swipe, you can innervate Harrison Jones. He doesn't want to give up a minion, though. Well, this is still pretty problematic for Soundstorm, because these four threes are going to be right unless the opponent has a um, Pyromancer with this Holy Nova. Whoa! Hello there. There it is. The king of calling cards does it once again. Let me tap into your brain real quick. What's going to be the next card for Druid? Quick. Ancient of Lore. Close. Ah, really close. Yeah. Coin, Doctor Boom. Finally found a good use of the coin. <laughs> Keeping that innervate might be really relevant for like the double combo. Double savage roars. Yeah. Mm. All right, he's missing the shadow or death, but he can at least steal a boom boss, so it's not going to be awful. <laughs> the best cabal shadow priest target in the game. <laughs> a boom bot. Uh, I guess so. This hand is actually bad. Well, you could Wrath for one and get Ancient of Lore, and it becomes instantly much better. Oh, a hero powers first. So he's going to play Harrison? Might as well get use out of it while you can. But this allows Silent Storm to steal another Boom Bot. That's right. Steal a Boom Bot and potentially cleared the board here. Mm -hmm. It's funny that both of them have Harrison's and it's not relevant. Yeah, that's yeah, was... They're both agreed to play Dragon Blackwing Corruptor. Mm -hmm. hmm. It looked like he wanted a thought steal. Oh. Eh. Well. Mediocre result. Mm -hmm. Ancient of Lore would have been fantastic for him. Ancient Lore is so flexible with Priest. You can use it as Burst with Alkanai Soul Priest. Yeah. That is pretty greedy. If the opponent combos, he will be still safe. But <laughs> you're always you're not happy taking Dr. Boom damage. Oh, man, oh, right for one. He is willing to go that far to beat him. Oh, no! We got it! We got the shade. So that way he shuts down the Dr. Boom. And he got Angel of Lore! That is a brutal sequence. He needs uh, Shrink Meister right here. Hmm. He can stop some of this damage with the taunted up Druid of the Claw, but then he's pretty much out of cards. So he's going to be top decking for answers to whatever Roger's going to put out. Where shall I strike? Yeah, he's going to not even risk it. He doesn't want to take. He doesn't want to die to combo. He knows yeah. his opponent drew too many cards, yeah. but it's still combo to win. And now he can uh, play the pie shredder. He can innovate shade. He can do a lot of things to really pressure his opponent out of the game here. Yeah. You yeah, know, I mean, even if this, both of these creatures are removed, he's still on a combo to win unless he can find a way to remove plus clear. Yeah, this priest is definitely starting to run into consistency issues like we're talking about. Druid was a class that he potentially wanted to target. But could it be his ultimate uh, victory and demise at the same time? Sludge Belcher is definitely a great sort, or what was, uh, what's the saying called? I can't even think of it right now. I'm too tired. I don't know what, what a sight for sore eyes. Is okay. that what you call it? Yeah, yeah. He needs to get, oh, he can't even circle combo. That He's both dead. is so devastating. Thought steal into two mana. Nope. No, his last chance was to uh, get into um, uh, into the Shrink Meister so he can steal that Drew of the Claw. But he can't even use it. Yep. Too slow, too late. Silent Storm is going to drop game number four. We're going to game five to determine who is coming to the ESO land between Silent Storm and Roger from Team Wave Spider. So the last game of the day is going to be Grim Patient Warrior mm -hmm. from Roger. Up against Priest. Up against Priest. I think the Druid is slightly better against the Priest than the, the Patron Warrior uh, because the, the tempo that you can gain. The Patron Warrior does feel like it's a little bit too situated on drawing the cards at the right time. And if it gets stopped, then the Priest can just gather the cards it needs necessary. Uh -huh. You play, you know, the Emperor Thorazin, you can Shadow Death. 
You play the big board, it gets cleared with Akunai, Soul Priest, and the clears. In a perfect world. In a perfect world, which could easily line up the other way. Yeah. Also, you could have an Orshire Cleric that just gets out of control if you play yeah. Armor Smith, and then it just, like, you can't answer it. Uh, yeah. Or let's talk about the uh, the Injured Blade Master, which can't get executed if you don't have it. Yeah. Normally, you have, like, another way. There's two ways to deal with the Injured Blade Master, like Shield Slamming or Executing. Yeah, and I think in a perfect world with perfect draws, the priest comes out on top. That's a tough game to play, though. Yeah, for sure. Because what is a perfect draw? Because if one class has a perfect draw, then would the other class be drawing into perfect answers, or would the other class be drawing into perfect threats? I don't know. I just blew my own mind. I just created a conundrum inside my own head. <laughs> For all the marvels of going to the finals, guaranteeing yourself some money and a trip to California, can Roger do it again as a qualified player? He's going to Viagame House Cup 3 at the end of the month as one of the invited players back from making the finals up mm -hmm. against Hoy. And he starts off with Injured Blade Master Harrison Jones, some valuable cards. Yeah. His opponent has that Fiery War Axe, which is so valuable against a Northshire Cleric. Yeah. Roger's had a pretty good couple months. So Anselm's had a pretty quiet couple months since his victory at the first season land finals. But here we go, underway with game number five, final match of the day, final match of Group C, final match for one of these players for season two of the Legendary Series. Well, he's got nothing else to do this turn. Setting out the injured Blade Master is asking for a death wish. Thirsty. His blade be thirsty. <laughs> he attacks the face with the fiery war axe, realizing that he's got death spite. So this is a big communication that you know I have death spite. I can be able to handle whatever you have. Yeah. Does this prop silent storm to hold on to anything? Hmm. Well, if he reads that there's a death spite. Well, his opponent's going to be attacking into it. Yeah. That has to be a death spite, right? Like, when you attack with the fire works, right. you get rid of the charge coming up on a turn four. Yeah. It seems odd. I'm, I'm actually really surprised that he went for this. Because now this Frothed and Berserker, that one damage can right. actually be pretty tough. I mean, I guess it gets killed by the death spite. Well, but he can hold on to that death by charge and just get value out of this Frothing Berserker with whatever comes down on this oh, turn. Oh, he can just Harrison and kill it off. Yeah. Okay. But that means this turn he's just heal passing. Right, but then does his opponent want to play Grim Patron and then kill off um, his own Frothing Berserker? I don't think yeah. so. I think he's willing to take a little punishment. Oh. Okay. Armor made to fit. Catch 22. Yeah. You wanted to kill off this uh, Death Spite? Do you want to let me draw a card? I think you definitely want to kill off the Death Spite and the Frothing Berserker. Kills two birds with one stone. And you can also steal the Acolyte next turn. Yeah. Shadow Manners would be pretty good there. Let's steal the Acolyte of Paint, throw it right. into the Frothing Berserker. Second Death Spite, though, will kill off that Harrison. And uh, this is... I don't know. I don't know who is ahead right now or behind. I would have to say that as long as the Grim Patron is drawing, it's still a really good spot. Yeah. Both death bites in the opening opens up so many opportunities. Right. But now he gets to steal the Accolade of Pain. That's a huge move. Yeah. Stealing the Accolade is actually like night and day difference because before, if he didn't, he wasn't able to, he'd be able to draw two cards off this. Say he only draws one. Yeah. Let me change your mind. And he still needs a card engine. Right. To be able to oh, find ways to close up the game. Grim Patron with Battle Rage is definitely a card engine. That's how many cards? Four cards? No, nah, he can get even more than that because he can sacrifice... Ooh, no, he decides not to. I was going to say he can sacrifice the Unstable Ghoul and then use the Whirlwind effect. Right. Everyone, get in here. Could have gone for five. Yeah. But then you give up your act. He also draws cards, too. Yeah. Wow. I don't know. He has the Warsong Commander, which is good. That's not overdrawing Priest, by the way, right? All right, so he has Holy Nova, but that just 
You can't just, use that. Yeah, that spawns more Grim Patrons. Especially with the Unstable Ghoul, he would spawn... I know, it would still be left with two Grim Patrons, but... This is still just really tough. No Shadow Madness. Yeah, no Shadow Madness, no Shadow or Pain. We've also concluded that this deck does not run any Light Bombs. That is... And he's drawn so many cards, too. Seems like this might just be like a Sludge Belcher and Power Word Shield or something. There's no other way to try and deal with the board, so you just have to try and block as much of it as possible. Yeah, that's fair. There's a Warsong Commander. There's also an Unstable Ghoul. And a, a lot of creatures Berserker. on board. And a Frothing Berserker. There's actually a possibility for Lethal. Feels like it. The only thing is that he would need to be able to get through the Sludge Belcher. But I think with all these little pittance of damage, he's going to be able to... Well, this just gives him one more Grim Patron target. I don't know how I well, feel about that. Well, one more Frothing Berserker whirlwind. It's like one of his chances he has to take here. He's not even going to wait. I think we're just going to wait and see, TJ. This could be it, but we don't know. We'll let Roger figure it out. Well, he skips on a lot of armor. Yeah. Silent Storm might as well be Steam Milk because he's about to get frothed. Well, he wants to clear the way for more Grim Patrons. Let's just let's just put Nate that clear. Mm -hmm. By suiciding the armor smith, he gets optimal amount. Now, also something that's interesting is that if he fills the board too much, it'll almost not matter if his opponent has a full board of patrons that don't die to Holy Nova. Holy moly! That is a lot of damage, though. That's got to be lethal. That has to be lethal, right? Five damage. Yeah, that's it. That probably Berserk is at like 14 health or 14 damage. Uh, and it's about to continue to get higher. Yeah. And Silent Storm is yeah, just it. watching his hopes that is it. of qualifying. Roger is going to be going to the finals. Oh, my goodness. 1920. <laughs> And to be killed by a frothing berserker. Oh, he goes for the BM finish. Goes for the BM finish. And Roger from Team Way E Spider, he throws his hands in the air. He's going to be the seventh player to join us at the Legendary Series Season 2 LAN Finals. Exciting stuff. Soundstorm had some really cool moments today. Yeah. But what, unfortunately, what an amazing journey from Roger's end. Uh, being able to qualify yet again for a, a well known tournament and do it through the open spot. Mm -hmm. uh, people really don't think much about one tournament performance. Sure, Roger qualified for Via Game. Sure, he got top two. But now sure. he's doing it again. Yeah, you know, yeah. he's, he's qualifying for yet another really tough event to go through. So many brackets and rings to get to that point. It's a little sad that Sandstorm couldn't get to the finals despite showing off really cool plays and getting one game away. But that Priest was a liability. And it's something that was part of his success for today, but also his downfall. It was like we said, you live and die by this priest. Yeah, and I, it was just really rough for him to be put in a situation like that and not even be able to find one win, mm -hmm. uh, being up 2-0. And you could see the sadness in his face, but I'm really happy uh, for Roger. Of course, um, he will be moving on to that Legendary Series Land Finals, be competing for 25,000 buckaroos. That's seven players so far. That's right. Coletto, was... Life Coach, Kabi, uh, Trump, Rainad, Lead Paint, Roger, is that it? Was that seven? That was seven. I think I forgot to count my thumb when I was counting that. But there's your bracket on the screen there. Roger's run through the tournament. Spider Raj, the hero, the superhero of the day, making it all the way through. Yeah. A couple of missteps here and there, but overall excellent play from his end. And just going to show you how, all, how important it is also even just to have that first round by, so that way he's able to wake up in the fresh mindset. For people confused, Roger did play second, and because we take the second through eighth place finishers who didn't go into the land finals, uh, second yeah. place finishers get a buy. Yeah, that's right. He lost to uh, Kalento in his legendary yeah. series week. That was the the sort of famous picture of Kalento laying in his bed. Um, and he can, now he can get revenge at exactly. Kalento at the finals, uh, and that's what he can opt to do. To do. And you guys can, too, as well. I believe next week will be the last chance qualifier. Uh, TJ, how can they sign up for that? Yeah, you can head over to legendaryseries.com for more information. But basically, next week, we're going to have 
Uh, open to North American players only be mm-hmm. due to flight and visa restrictions. The land finals is so close that anybody outside of North America would not be able to get there in time. Uh, but it's going to be a giant open. Eight spots are up for grabs for the Legendary Series land finals at the beginning of June. And you could be one of those players. Uh, so make sure you head over there uh, for updates. Uh, I think like the full information will go out at the beginning of this week. Like um, where you, how many people players can sign up, where it's capped at, uh, exactly the, the time and dates for the last chance qualifier. Mm-hmm. But that'll be your opportunity if you want to meet me and Dan and maybe play some Hearthstone in the process. Sure. Sounds good. That's right. Mm-hmm. And uh, also, we do want to take this opportunity to give a big shout-out to our sponsors who are going to make that land finals possible. We're flying 16 players out here. Uh, we're going to have a really great time. It's going to be me and Dan, and who cares about all the rest of the people, because me and Dan are enough. And Roger. And Roger. Spider yeah. Raj. Spider Raj. Spider Raj fighting crime again. So big shout-out to Plantronics and Gigabyte for making the Legendary Series possible. And also, you can hit us up on Twitter. Dan, where can they find us? Uh, they can hashtag HLS or follow us at ESL Hearthstone. Uh, Zumo is at ZumoQD. I'm at Frodan. Let us know what you guys thought about those matches, some of your favorite moments, whether it was in or outside the game. Good stuff all around. Today, even though it didn't have any invited players, had some of the most exciting and fun games. Mm-hmm. And, of course, we're also doing a raffle as well, ESL.GG slash Redemption Series. That'll be going on throughout the weekend. You have a chance to win... Uh, Plantronics headset, as well as some classic packs. Uh, So if you want to do that, head to that link below. Follow the instructions on screen, and you'll be entered in to win the raffle. I think we're... We're uh, done. Yeah, we are done. I think we're waiting to see if we have a translator available for the interview, but I'm not Mm -hmm. sure if that's um, going to be able to happen. I know a lot of players expect the winner's interview. Right. uh, But with Roger, it's uh, a little bit tougher. Yeah, we have to set things up, um, unfortunately, for... You know, it's just we don't have a Chinese translator. On the spot, yeah. But I'm, I'm definitely yeah, looking. Make for... me feel bad, all right, TJ. I'm supposed to know Chinese a lot better because my parents taught me, but it's just not good enough to to interpret. Yeah. Well, you're going to be the translator for the finals. You signed up for being host, but Apparently. you're also gonna, going to have to be the translator. Um, but it looks like uh, it looks like we're not going to be able to have an interview. Okay. So. Um, looks like that is going to be it. Do you have any final thoughts, Dan, of the day? No, today was really fun. Great games. Uh, Silent Storm came one game away, so shout out to him, but he didn't make it. Roger, well played and very deserving of his win as well. And uh, can't wait to see what's going to come out more from guys like Luigi's and Kornico. I think uh, they have a lot to show in the future. Yeah, they should definitely be players to watch on the radar. So we do have one more group for the Redemption Series that is going to take place tomorrow. We'll be back at the same time, 1 p.m., PST to find the eighth player that's going to join us at that land finals. But uh, for myself, from Frodan, from everybody here at ESL, thank you guys for watching. Congratulations to Roger, and we'll see you tomorrow.